how to draw a loose structure. Because the next lab we're going to start, the first step in that that we're going to get through today is to draw the loose structure for a bunch of molecules. So there's a bunch of steps involved here when drawing a Lewis structure. If you can uh, remember these steps, you'll be in good shape, but ultimately I think they're on the formula sheet, so you don't have to memorize them. And if you are smart and you do enough practice, then you will kind of remember the steps without having to memorize them anyway after practicing them so many times. So we'll go through these uh, in the form of an example. So step one. Draw a skeletal structure for the compound. So if I give you a formula, like the one on the quiz, the formula tells you how many of each element's there, and it tells you a charge, usually zero, but it could be negative, like in this case. That's enough information to figure out at least an idea of what the structure might look like. So you want to start by taking the atoms you have and connecting them. There will be some trial and error involved. So the way you connect them right now might not be the best possible way. You might have to rearrange it later. And you'll find that out as you go through the steps. But the idea here is to take the least electronegative atom and make that your central atom. If you can't remember that, you can usually rationalize your way through it. Right? Low electronegativity means it's not electron greedy. Low electronegativity means it's willing to share. It doesn't attract the electrons too much. It allows the electrons to be pulled away from it. So I want that type of atom in the middle. Chlorine's electronegativity is 3.0. Oxygen is 3.5. So if the chlorine has a lower electronegativity, I want that one in the middle. And I want to connect the other atoms to it. All right, I want the atom in the middle that's more willing to share because I'm putting it in a position where it has to share a lot. If I put the oxygen in the center, now I'm putting an atom in the middle that is very electron greedy, but I'm forcing it to be sharing all these electrons with other atoms. That's usually not a favorable arrangement. So I don't want to do that. I want the least electronegative atom in the center. Now I want to connect the other atoms to it. I've got three oxygens, I've got to put them in there, so I put them all on the central atom. That's step one. So then step two is to count up the total number of valence electrons. So most of you guys did really good on the quiz, but the people who did not get a reasonable structure, most of you, your main problem was you didn't have the correct number of valence electrons. So if you can't get step two, you really don't have much of a chance of getting a reasonable Lewis structure. So the idea here is in the Lewis structure it's meant to be the best representation we can give for this molecule. So we have to include all the atoms that are present and we have to show all the electrons that are present in either bonds or lone pair. And so we have to know how many electrons there are that we're going to put in there. So to do this you find each element one at a time. So chlorine on the periodic table, this periodic table doesn't show it, but the Roman numeral at the top of this column is seven, seven A. So that atom has seven valence electrons that it brings in with it. Then the oxygen is in six A, so that brings in six. So seven plus six, but I've got three oxygens. Each one brings in six. So that's going to be a total of six times three. Then, since I have a negative charge, I have to add an extra electron, right? Because a chlorine having seven valence electrons is the number it would need if it were neutral and balanced. And oxygen having six is the number it would need if it were neutral and balanced. So if I didn't add this extra electron for the negative charge, that would be for a neutral or balanced molecule. So if it's not balanced and I have an extra electron, I have to account for that and put that into my structure. Ninety. 9% of the time, you end up with an even number of electrons. The electrons pretty much always go in pairs, right? Either in a bonded pair or a lone pair. So if you add up the number of valence electrons, you get an odd number. Double check your math. You probably made a mistake. So here we get 26 valence electrons. That's step two. And then, so in step three, then I take my electrons and I put them in the molecule in the most reasonable way I can. I've already got a good skeletal structure. I know that I have 26 total electrons. I've already used two, four, six to make my skeletal structure so I can subtract those from the starting amount. 
and I know how many I still have to put in. If your Lewis structure does not contain the correct number of electrons, it cannot be correct. You have to show all of them. So right now I've already got six, I need 20 more. So then I go to the next step, which is to use the remaining electrons and put them on the more electronegative element first. Right, so understanding what electronegativity is, that makes sense. Electronegativity is a tendency to attract electrons. So if an atom's better at attracting electrons, it's going to be on the outside with more electrons that it owns all by itself, rather than in the inside where it's sharing all its electrons. And if it attracts electrons more, that's where I want to put my lone pairs first. So I, at that point, as we said, we had 20 electrons, so I started to put them in 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Once I complete the noble gas configurations for the outside atoms, I don't put any more electrons on the outside atoms. But so far, if I count up all the electrons I've put in, I've only used 24 out of the 26 that I have. So that's step four. So obviously I still have to put two more electrons in. So step five tells me if I still have electrons once I've completed the noble gas configurations for all the outside atoms, then I put the remaining electrons, all of them that I still have, I must put on the central atom. So this should really probably say place all remaining electrons on the central atom. In this case, there are two remaining. I put them on the chlorine. And that's convenient because now the chlorine has two, four, six, eight valence electrons around it. So it also makes the chlorine's noble gas configuration. So this is a nice structure. I've got noble gas configurations completed for all my atoms. And I s recognize here that there's a negative charge. So I can show that for the overall structure outside of brackets to show that the structure is not neutral, but it is a ion overall with a negative one charge. Any questions about that example? Step six does not apply to this molecule. So not always all the steps will apply to every molecule, but you still want to follow them all. So if I had a situation, so let's say this molecule was a little bit different. Let's say instead of 26 electrons to put in, I only had 24 to put in. If I only had 24 to put in, I never would have got to the point where I added those last two. Right, so if I had only 24 valence electrons to put in, In this situation, the chlorine would not have enough valence electrons to make a noble gas configuration. The whole point of doing this is to try to show a structure where the atoms are stable with noble gas configuration. So if the chlorine doesn't have enough, then I would take one of the pairs of electrons from an outside atom and share them with the chlorine to give the chlorine enough. That allows the outside atom still to have eight, but now the chlorine would also have eight and now the molecule should be more stable. So that's, this is the step where you would start to make double and triple bonds. There are many molecules where double and triple bonds don't form. So if you're drawing a Lewis structure and you're following the steps, you might never get to the point where you ever even think about double or triple bonds in the molecule. Don't start off with double and triple bonds in the beginning. Only if you get to this point and a central atom doesn't have enough electrons to make its noble gas configuration, that's the only time where you should start making double and triple bonds. But this molecule doesn't have any double bonds because we had 26 electrons and we made the noble gas configurations without any double or triple bonds. All right, let's look at some more examples. Let's fill this in. We'll do each step for each one of these. So step one, I've got CH4. I've got a carbon and four hydrogens. Carbon's electronegativity is 2.5, hydrogen is 2.1. Which should be my central atom? Carbon. So the rule is, and that's why this step one is more of a guideline than a rule, the guideline is to put the lower electronegativity atom in the center. But that can never be hydrogen. Hydrogen can never have more than one bond. And I can't put hydrogen in the center. Hydrogen only wants two electrons to make the same number as a noble gas. So it can never have more than two electrons around it. It can never have more than one bond. So by default, I had to put the carbon in the center. It's the only element that can have more than one bond. So then I would just connect the other things to it. I've got four hydrogens. 
They can all only have one bond each. I have to put them on the carbon. Uh, so then let's do step two. What's step two for this? Count up the valence electrons. So each carbon, carbon's in group 4A, so the carbon has four valence electrons. And hydrogen is in group 1A, each hydrogen brings in one. Well, I've got four of those, so that's four plus four, or eight. Then step three is compare how many I've actually put in already versus how many I have. Right now, I've put in two, four, six, eight. I've put in eight. I have eight. I'm done. I don't need anything else, and so that is my final structure. So sometimes I might not even get any farther than that. Because sometimes putting the, uh, sometimes there are no lone pairs. All the atoms are, all the electrons are shared in the skeletal structure. All of all the electrons I have, they're all in there already. I can't put any more in. I shouldn't put any more in. So that's CH4. So let's go to the next one, CCL4. So I do the same thing. Here are the carbons 2.5. The chlorine's electronegativity is 3.0. On the exam, I'll give you the electronegativities. You don't have to memorize the electronegativities for all the atoms. Carbon is lower in electronegativity. It belongs in the center. So I'll create my skeletal structure by putting the chlorines on it. Step two, count up the valence electrons. Carbon's in group 4A. Chlorine is in group 7A. And there are four chlorines. So that's 28 from the chlorines plus four more. That gives me 32 valence electrons. So step three. I've used 2, 4, 6, 8 of my 32. So the number I still have to put in, 32 minus 8, that gets me a 24. I still have to put 24 electrons in. So I want to put those electrons in around the outside atoms first. So when I do that, I would go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. A lot of times it will work out nicely. The number I needed to complete the noble gas configuration for each chlorine happened to be the number I had. So I'm done. I don't have to do the next step, which would be to put any additional electrons I have on the central atom. I don't have additional electrons, so I can't put them on the central atom. I don't need to make any double or triple bonds because the central atom has eight and it needs eight. Everything looks stable. Next example, water. Again, I can't make hydrogen my central atom, so I've got to make oxygen my central atom. And I connect the two hydrogens. Counting up the valence electrons, oxygen is in group 6A, hydrogen is in group 1A, and I've got two of them, so that's eight. So far, of the eight I have, I've used two, four. I've got four more to put in. So I put them on the outside atoms first, but the outside atoms already have a noble gas configuration. So I don't want to change. Them. I don't want to put any lone pairs on the hydrogen. So then the next step says to put the lone pairs on the central atom. So I had four more to put in. I put them on the central atom. And then in the end, I want to just double check and make sure it looks reasonable. I've got eight valence electrons around my oxygen. I've got two around each hydrogen. So that looks stable. Looking at O2, only two atoms. Very simple skeletal structure. I just have to connect them. Each oxygen brings in six valence electrons. So that's a total of 12. So far, of the 12 I have, I've only used two. So I've got 10 left I've got to put in. So of those 10 remaining electrons, really I don't have a central atom and outside atoms. So I've only got two atoms and it's symmetrical, so it doesn't matter which atom I put the electrons on. So I just start putting them in on one of, one of the oxygens, two, four, six, eight, ten. So I used up all my electrons. So at this point you may have the instinct to say, well, this oxygen here doesn't have eight, it only has six. It needs more electrons, so I just throw more in. You can't do that. You have to use exactly the total number that you calculated, assuming you calculated it correctly, 
you can't put in more than 12 total electrons. Can't just put more electrons in. So that means, I mean, rule four is moot because I don't have any additional electrons to put on the central atom. Actually, I think that's rule five. So then I get down to rule six, which says, if one of my atoms doesn't have enough electrons, then I need to start sharing in to make double or triple bonds. So this oxygen on the left is okay. It has eight, including the shared pair. But the oxygen on the right only has six. So what do I need to do is I need to take two away from the one on the left. I don't want to put them with the one on the right like this because then the one on the left wouldn't be satisfied. When I have an atom that's unsatisfied, it doesn't have enough electrons to make a noble gas configuration, I have to take this pair away and share them. So both atoms can use that pair to make a noble gas configuration. So that is why oxygen has a double bond. Because both oxygens need the electrons to make a noble gas configuration. Last one, CN minus. So I've got a carbon and a nitrogen. Carbon brings in four valence electrons. I've got one of those plus the five from the nitrogen. That gives me nine. Plus, I have a negative charge, so that means I have one electron more than the nine that I would need to make it neutral. So that means I really have a total of ten valence electrons I've got to put in the molecule. So should I start putting them on the carbon or the nitrogen first? Well, I need the electronegativities. Carbon's 2.5, nitrogen's 3.0. Once I have my skeletal structure and I'm starting to put my lone pairs in, I want to put them on the more electronegative atom because that's the one that attracts electrons more. So I would start by completing the nitrogen. And then I would put some on the carbon. So I have 10 and I've used all 10. If I still had more, I would continue to put them on the carbon because it can still use more to make its noble gas configuration but I can only put in 10 because that's the number I calculated that I need. So I don't have more electrons, I don't need these other steps, but the carbon doesn't have enough, so I need the nitrogen to share more with it. So in this case, if I share, so if I draw that, if I share one pair with the carbon, then I make a double bond. Is that complete now? No, the carbon still doesn't have eight. So I need to share a second pair from the nitrogen with the carbon, and that's why the cyanide ion has a triple bond. And I should probably put that in brackets with a negative one since there is an overall charge on it. Any questions about that? When losing an electron gains the line, I mean, the line you just added. Yeah, so I didn't lose or gain anything. All I did was take this lone pair and rearrange it. I just moved it from that position to shared between the atoms instead of only owned by the nitrogen. And I did that because the carbon needs those electrons. The nitrogen still needs them too. They both need the electrons to make a noble gas configuration so they have to share them. There's no such thing as a quadruple bond either. So FYI on that one. Any other questions? All right, so that is all filled in. So let's do this one and we'll do the quiz CS2. So in this case, they have the same electronegativity. So there's more than one option here. I could put the carbon in the center or I could put one of the sulfurs in the center. So sometimes it's not obvious what the skeletal structure should be. You have to work with more than one skeletal structure until you can find a way that one structure looks more stable than the other. Let's count up the valence electrons. Carbon's in group 4A. Sulfur's in group 6A. So that gets me 16 valence electrons. So far in both my structures, I've used four. So I've got 12 more to put in. So I'd start by putting them on the more electronegative atom, but I don't know what that atom is because they have the same electronegativity. So 
Usually in that case you'd put them on the outside atom. So that's 12 there, 12 more there. I don't have any more to put in. I put all 16 in, but the central atom in both of my possible structures doesn't have eight, so I need to start sharing more. So now I've got more options. So I could share, from one sulfur, I could share a triple bond to make eight for the central carbon, or I could have shared a double bond on both sides to make eight for the central carbon. Now I've got more possibilities here. I could make a triple bond here and a single bond on the other side. I can make double bonds on both sides. Or I could have made a triple bond on this side. So just following those six rules, I come up with five different structures that all look reasonable. So this one, this particular problem, we'll have to put on hold. Because we need to talk about formal charge. Formal charge will allow us to see which atoms in these structures create a charge imbalance versus which are balanced. Right? So the main driving force for Lewis structures is to make a noble gas configuration for all the atoms. Then, if I have more than one option where that is okay because they all have noble gas configurations, then I need to look at formal charge because if any of my individual atoms in these structures are not balanced in charge, it's probably not going to be the most stable structure. So we will continue this example next time uh, when we have a chance to talk about formal charge. So let's just talk about the quiz question. So in the quiz question, I had two carbons, four hydrogens, and an oxygen, right? Yeah. So this is a little bit more complicated. I've got more atoms, but uh, you know, if you follow the steps that we just went through, you should come up with a reasonable structure. So when I have hydrogens, I always want to put those in my skeleton last. Because they go on the outside, they can only have one bond. So if I have two carbons and an oxygen, I could arrange it like this. Or I could arrange it like this. Oops. That's not right. Like that. Right? Two options. Both are reasonable. But generally, since I want the lowest electronegativity atom in the center, and carbon is 2.5, and oxygen is 3.5, I wouldn't probably put the oxygen in the center, but there are some molecules where oxygen will do that. So that, putting the lowest electronegativity atom in the center is a guideline, not a rule. Then I want to count up the valence electrons. So carbon brings in four and I've got two of those. Hydrogen brings in one and I've got four of those. Oxygen brings in six. So that is 18 electrons. Most of you got that right. So if I've got 18 electrons, so far I've made two bonds in each structure, so that's four that I've used, so I've got 14 left. I definitely, so at this point, this is where maybe some of you may have made mistakes, those of you who didn't get a reasonable structure. At this point, I want to put the remaining electrons on the most electronegative atom first, because it should be the one that attracts electrons the most. So I fill up the oxygens, noble gas configuration, in both structures before I start putting lone pairs on the carbons. Oh, shit. I forgot to put the hydrogens in. I got a little carried away there. Sorry about that. I need hydrogens. Before I uh, put my electrons in, I need a reasonable skeleton. So I want to put the hydrogens on the less electronegative atoms first. And there are a number of different ways I can do that. So I may find I need to rearrange that at some point. But I don't want to put the hydrogens on the oxygen first because the oxygen is more electronegative. It attracts electrons more. It will be more likely to pull the electrons away from the hydrogen so the hydrogen can be more stable in a situation where it's sharing with an atom that's willing to share, not sharing with an atom that pulls electrons away from it. 
Okay, so then I have 14 electrons to put in. No, I don't because I've used more to connect to the hydrogen. Okay, so in my structures I've used 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So I only have 6 left. So I would start by putting those on the oxygen. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I've got one more pair, so maybe I'll put those on the carbon. All right, I'm putting the valence electrons in as lone pairs. First on the more electronegative atom, then if I still have more, I put them on the less electronegative atom. So how do these structures look? Let's look at this one first. Any issues with that one? Doesn't have to be. The oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, so generally you wouldn't start with it in the middle. You would generally start with it on the outside. Right. This carbon here does not have a noble gas configuration. At this point, if I had all my elements with noble gas configurations, that would be good. I would say that's a reasonable structure. But this carbon only has two, four, six valence electrons. It needs more electrons. So what I would normally do is if I had an atom attached to it with a lone pair, I would use a lone pair to share, but the atom attached to it doesn't have any lone pair. So how can I satisfy that carbon's octet on the left there? Well, there's a couple things I could do. One thing I could do is to share one of these lone pairs with that carbon and make a ring. Remember, rings are not super stable. Well, we haven't talked about that, so there's no reason why you wouldn't necessarily do that. Another option is to say, well, this carbon needs more electrons. It can't really get it from the oxygen. Maybe it's too far away. You don't really think about the ring forming. So instead, you just pop this hydrogen over to that carbon. If I do that, now I'm setting it up so that the carbon that doesn't have enough electrons is in the center. That's usually what I want. I want, if I have to have an atom that doesn't have enough electrons, I want it to be bonded directly to an atom that has a lone pair. Then the lone pair can be shared in to make a double bond. And this is a structure that the majority of people came up with. Either of those are okay. Either of those structures creates noble gas configurations, eight electrons around each atom. And so as far as what we've talked about, they're both perfectly reasonable. Is there a way I can fix my other structure on the left and make it more reasonable? The problem with this one is that this carbon has, uh, this carbon is okay, but this carbon on the right only has six valence electrons. So what could I do? I could make a ring here again. I could take this pair on the carbon and share with that carbon. That would give me the other structure that I already made. Or I could just share one of these lone pairs in here. If I did that, I would have a structure that looks like this. I think maybe one student came up with this, or one group, I should say. That one's okay. When we talk about formal charge, we'll find out that this one creates some unnecessary charge imbalance, so it's not really ideal. But for the quiz, I gave you guys full credit if you came up with that, because so far we haven't talked about formal charge. Then there's one other structure that you could have come up with. As you're going through the process, you might have done things a little bit differently. You could have come up with this. If you started with the oxygen on the outside, oops, what did I do there? Don't have enough hydrogens. If you started with the oxygen on the outside and put one of the hydrogens on it instead of putting them all on carbon, and then put the lone pairs in, you would eventually found that you need a double bond there. So that's also a reasonable structure that you could have that you could have made. So there are a number of correct answers there. Any questions about the quiz question? So <coughs> this is the type of thing, as you can see going through this example especially, it can take a lot of trial and error before you come up with a real, with a really reasonable structure. If you follow those steps, though, 
you should come up with something that's reasonable. But when you come up with your final answer, you want to be able to check it over. Look to see each atom has eight valence electrons around it. And then later when we talk about formal charge, calculate the formal charge and make sure that's also reasonable. Um, <coughs> but it takes a lot of trial and error and it takes a lot of practice. This is skill. It's not something you can memorize. I mean, you have to kind of know the steps. But applying the steps takes practice. It takes a lot of practice to master the skill. 